Hello. Hello, whiskey lovers around the world. Joke here. And today I'm talking to... Anthony McCallum. Anthony McCallum, of course, of course. The handsomest whiskey bottler in all of the world. That's who, that's what we think of you, Anthony. And um, thank you for joining us tonight, this, this little Zoom session. And uh, for those of you watching, you can see behind me and my uh, virtual screen, some of Anthony's beautiful new bottlings. Now, Anthony, before we get into that, uh, you're Anthony McCallum, credentials and whiskey for years. Yeah, 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Started my career on the Isle of Skye. Oh, wow. Then moved back down to Glasgow. Um, helped independent bottler uh, Hart Brothers um, develop some of their exports and learned a lot from Alistair Hart, who mm -hmm. was the ex master blender of White and Mackay. Oh, yes. Um, so I learned a lot from him on the wood maturation and selecting the best of casks and selecting the best wood. Um, and then started developing some independent bottlings of my own. Dunvegan maybe rings a bell to some people yep. uh, and some other brands as well, uh, including an Irish McGilligan's, oh. uh, which oh. uh, won an award. You know, even the Irish is saying, where can we get this, you know, Scottish Irish whiskey? <laughs> it was peated, was it not? Well, there were two versions here. There was a peated and an unpeated one. Oh. And the unpeated was finished in sherry casks. So matured in Ireland and then finished in sherry in Scotland. Oh, uh, that was lovely, yeah. But the Irish found that was a crazy idea. Uh -huh. that said, rather than take it all the way to Scotland and finish it in a sherry cask, they says, we could just put a bottle of sherry in the cask and you'll get your sh sherry finish. No. <laughs> wow. Okay. I never, I never knew if that was Irish humour or if it was for real. <laughs> Who knows? I remember McGilligan. I actually had it in tastings before the McGilligans, uh, but it was the peated one that we had. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, there's an old Irish song, McGilligan's youngest daughter, Maggie May. She's a darn and she's a daisy and she drives the fellas crazy. Uh, McGilligan's youngest daughter, Maggie May. An old <laughs> Irish song. <laughs> Lovely, eh? Lovely, yeah. And so, yes, you did that, and you, uh, Chieftains was of your hand too? Yeah, so then after that, uh, after a few years, then I moved uh, to one of my suppliers, Ian McLeod, uh, who were blenders at the time. So similar to Hart Brothers, but, uh, you know, slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were supplying me some of the barrels uh, for some of the brands I was uh, bottling. Yeah. And, um, they asked me to do that within their business, and that's when I developed Chieftains. Um, and then the business moved on, and then they bought Glengoyne. Then I took care of relaunching Glengoyne uh, mm -hmm. with various expressions. And, um, and then we bought another distillery, Tamdu. And after a few years, then I thought, my time is done. Uh, I developed Six Isles and some other brands for them as well. Mm -hmm. And then decided to go back to my own business, which was still in existing, but was sleeping. Um, and I revived it uh, by starting by my own stocks in 2016 um, and then launched in 2018. Now, I, I, I must say, Anthony, what, uh, there's two things that impress me about it. Mm -hmm. You're, I'm talking about your new stock, but a very impressive uh, CV as well you just you just presented but other than that your new bottlings what I uh, what impresses me most is is of course the whiskey inside the bottles the most but also the artwork it's absolutely wonderful how did you come to do this the artwork on proper art on whiskey bottles well I come from a, an artistic family uh, I mean when I was small I was the best in the class in terms of art. I was only 10 years old and I was getting 18 out of 20. Um, and that was being noticed, noted by an artist himself. Uh -huh. um, so I probably had, you know, the, the family genes in terms of art and I've always been interested in yeah. art. 
and uh, I I've been buying art over the years and then one morning I woke up with uh, the McPink uh, art of Ashley Cook of Mary Queen of Scott yeah, in, my, in my room and I wake up to it on the wall uh, in front of my bed every morning and one morning I woke up and I think it was a Sunday morning so you know stay a wee bit in bed uh, and daydream a bit and then came the idea I said I love this piece of art so much I need to create a whiskey that's going to be the imagery of this piece of art so I thought pink I need to use some port casks yes. um, and in terms of the content I'm going to try and create a blend that's going to taste like a malt mm -hmm. show to people that you can have a good blended whiskey that can taste just as good as a malt whiskey. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, people have such a bad uh, idea these days of blended whiskey. Mm -hmm. Most consumers say, oh, I just want a malt. I'm just a, a malt drinker. No, no, no. You know, blends are for Coke and for orange juice uh, or for Red Bull. Uh, yeah. I wanted to show to people you can actually drink a blend just like uh, a malt. Yeah, if you can. done properly. If it's done in the old tradition, you know, of marrying uh, your different ingredients. Yes. Uh, and then non chill filtered. And then even, you know, bottling at a higher strength, like the, the McPink is at 43.5%. And yes. yet it doesn't burn. It's just mm -hmm. soft, smooth. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Fruity. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and fruity. And, uh, mm. Red fruits, yeah. Red fruits. And the, the idea was also to bring a, a you know a, a younger consumer as well with the art. Yes, you know, with more modern packaging, because uh, we often see you know whiskey, you know, as an older person's drink, and yeah. I wanted to, you know, create a more modern image to whiskey that yeah. will bring a younger and maybe you know more feminine, uh, you know, drinker into the category. Mm. Yeah, and for those of you watching, uh, I'm actually, I'm looking at the very same picture you're telling me about, although I have it as a print on canvas. Uh, you sent us over the picture for the stand at, uh, at The Hague in Whiskey yeah. Land, and I actually uh, stole it, the, the image, and had it printed onto a, onto a canvas. I have it here in this room, actually. I'm looking at it just now. Uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, with her dress and... Uh, the map of Scotland in her dress, and then the little terrier dogs down below. Yeah, it's a, it's a fabulous image. Uh, and the artist is Ashley Cook. And the idea was also on the packaging to promote Scottish artists. Because mm -hmm. it's quite hard, you know, from a small country like Scotland for the artist to then, you know, export themselves internationally. And I thought, yes. you know, it's also the idea was to also help promote themselves mm -hmm. uh, through the bottling of the whiskey and being able to tell their story on the back of the box as well with the link to their website so people if they're interested in art they can also order online uh, directly from the artists wow and in the line you can see it behind me folks the uh, uh, the mcpink has, has changed its uh, its label now huh yeah, this is a special edition. Um, this year was the 700th anniversary of the Declaration of Arbroath. Of course. Uh, and so a lot of people don't know what this declaration is. What mm -hmm. we call declaration was actually a letter uh, written by all the clan chiefs and nobles of Scotland on the 5th of April uh, sorry, 6th of April, 1320. Uh, and 6th of April was an important date for myself because it's also my birthday. Yeah. Obviously not 1320. If not, it'd be very well preserved, you know, from <laughs> drinking a lot of whiskey. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was an important date and an important celebration, which unfortunately with the pandemic couldn't be celebrated. Mm. Uh, I wanted to bottle in April. But I pushed it back till till the autumn, uh, yeah. when things could be printed and and uh -huh. developed. 
Uh, but again, I commissioned art from four of my artists uh, to, to show their interpretation, their modern interpretation of the Declaration of Arbroath. Yes. And chose some special vintages uh, to go in the bottle. So not the standard yes. uh, art of whiskey, but some special editions. And also using French wine casks uh, for a few of them, because this letter signed by the nobles of Scotland uh -huh. asked to recognize Robert the Bruce as King of Scots mm -hmm. and also declare that Scotland is an independent country, uh, cannot be divided and cannot be ruled from England. So that letter was sent to the Pope who at the time was residing in France. Um, and that was the idea is to take barrels from the area of where the Pope was residing at that time, because that was also the type of barrels that were used at the time in Scotland for maturing whiskey. Wow. How cool is that? And that's, it's behind me just now, that yellow, is that, is that a kind of copy of the, the declaration itself? Yeah, well, that's one of the pieces of art that's uh, from the McPeat artist, Murray Robertson. Um, so he tends to use, uh, you can see a map of Scotland, and then around it, yeah, he's put above uh, a picture of Robert the Bruce, mm -hmm. uh, and also the, uh, the whole text of the Declaration. Oh, the outlaw king, Robert the Bruce. Uh, for those yeah. of you who have Netflix, it's a it's it's a, quite a, a movie, uh, the Outlaw King, about how he became king. Um, and in the in the in the Declaration of Abroad, which is very important to Scottish patriots, uh, is if there's so many men still left standing. Uh, Never shall we be under English rule. Ah, there we go. And yet, <laughs> and yet. <laughs> <laughs> your your masters okay let's not go into politics <laughs> we might get into trouble we might get into bother mm. so there we are the declaration of our broth so after mcpink what's the next one up in line um well uh, i rebottled because i was running short of some vintages um so i rebottled a couple of new vintages uh, there was a, a link called Ruby Port, mm -hmm. um, and there's also a Deluin, uh, which is in the Pomerol organic wine cask. Yeah. So and these two yeah, new. They, they've got they, you've you've given them special names, yes. So you have the McPink, and then. Ah no, okay, on their brove, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was talking about new vintages, but on their brove. Uh, You've got the, I've not got them all here, but you've got the, the McElligans, which is behind you. Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, which is um, yeah. Speyside McAllen, and it's a 2009. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what I've got in my glass. Uh, and it's uh, been finished in a Montley, which is a small village just north of Bone in Burgundy, uh, from your crew. So okay. a top, top mm -hmm. wine. Uh, cask. Is it? It's not Pinot Noir, no. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Wow. yeah. And um, after that, the, there's also uh, behind you. There's a, a Mac Warrior as well. Yes. Uh, which is a Glen Burgi. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, also in the Burgundy uh, wine cask. Hmm. Uh, actually, no because uh, I changed it. See, the, the difficulty of these bottlings, uh, both both actually, the, the McAllen, I changed the, the casks uh, when I actually tried the barrels mm -hmm. because I had to get 700 bottles and some of the barrels wouldn't give me 700 bottles, even oh. using two, two barrels. Yeah. Uh, so the the... The, the warrior was uh, going to be a burgundy and actually was uh, a pomerol. Okay. Yeah. And after, so you've got McPink, McElegance, McWarrior, yeah. and then Mac of, 
the Isles, is that? Mac of the Isles, yeah. Mac of the Isles uh, is an interesting one, uh, as the, the the big the big players don't like you to use their names. No. Um, so, Mac of the Isles up till now is mostly been West Coast, so uh, a blend of three single malts from the islands, Mal, Jura, and Isla, mm -hmm. and there to uh, show a new interpretation of the Mac of the Isles, we've gone further north to Orkney. Uh -huh. and as you know, in Orkney, you only have two distilleries. Yes, yes. You have Highland Park and you have Scapa. Yes. So this is a Norkney blended malt. How so could that? <laughs> so how not, come? Huh? So it can only be two before. things. Yeah. Uh, it's what we, we call a, a teaspoon. Ah, yes. A teaspoon of HP sauce. Yes. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. Ah. So yeah, for those of you watching who don't know what Anthony means by that, uh, some whiskey distillers, they'll let you have a barrel of their whiskey, but you, you're not allowed to, to name it. So they'll take one teaspoon, just a little teaspoon from another whiskey and put it into the barrel. And so it's registered basically as a blended malt mm -hmm. and isn't considered a single malt anymore. So, but because of the one teaspoon, even that, that's how, that's how serious Scotland takes its, uh, its malts. So that's, that was the Mac of the Isles. And then we have... And the Mac of the Isles is also finished in, um, in a Burgundy cask, a Corton Renard. Okay, yeah. Which is again the top, yeah. top Burgundy oh, wine. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, and then we have, what, what's the next and one? The, the Mac Pete. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Mac Pete uh, is again one I couldn't name by its name. Uh, so it's a single malt, it's 10 years old, wow. and it's double matured in bourbon, so refill bourbon, then first fill bourbon, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I called it Lagerland. Okay, <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, <laughs> so it's Danish, is it? <laughs> so it's very, it's very in its style, you know, it's very uh, grassy and mineral. Uh, uh -huh. as one would expect, full of peat, but there's also some elegance uh, from the, the first full uh, bourbon barrel uh, finish as well. Wow. And all of these bottlings have a, a special strength as well, an anniversary strength. Uh -huh. So I said it was the 6th of April, 1320, the declaration. So the strength is 6-4, so not 64, but 46, because 64 would have been too strong for yes. some cast. So I did it 46, 46. Point dot comma four. Point 20. Oh, point 20. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yes. 2020. Oh, cool. Well done. Ah, and, and most people who have tasted them said, that, yeah, it's amazing because it is the perfect balance. Like the you know the Mac of the Isles, mm -hmm. uh, you know with the with the HP and the Scapa is just so beautiful. You've got you know it's quite punchy. You've still got the spiciness mm -hmm. coming through from the HP, uh, and you've got this sort of burnt heather, uh, and you've got just some light peat. It's uh -huh. uh, like like peat smoke from you know uh, heather peat, mm. um, and then you've got a little drop of uh, saltiness and then you've got this extra fruit coming from the wine cask lovely it's a perfect balance you've got a bit of punchiness and also a lot of elegance coming through beautiful and the same wow. for the other ones and, and and for the people in the netherlands watching uh if you're interested in any of these beautiful whiskies with lovely artwork uh it's all for sale you know that's the that's the good news and it's uh, it's a time of year when you would want to be buying such things, and just go to bresserandtimmer.nl, and on their website you can see the the places where it's for sale. Uh, just click on it and, and see that your closest liquor store to you, where you can order it. So. And they're each um, numbered one 
to 700. Wow. Uh, so it is a very limited edition. Um, and on the back label, you have the, maybe hard to see, but the bottom part of the label uh, shows the, the seals of each of the nobles and clan chiefs of Scotland, which was at the bottom of the letter uh, before it got sent to the Pope. Wow. Uh, and were there two Popes at the time? Um, you maybe know better. Uh, I think there was only one. Okay, because... Maybe, yeah, I was reading a Nigel Tranter book recently where they decided to send off to the Pope, but one of the Popes would recognise Scotland, the other wouldn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but I can't remember if it's, if it's the same period and time. Uh, so, there we go. Well, this was just after, obviously, William Wallace got captured mm -hmm. and killed by the English, and that's what, you know, uh, brought this situation because, you know, there was no no, no chief uh, within Scotland to, you know, to fight and defeat the English. So uh, that's there was divisions within the clans and within the, the 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 nobility in Scotland, and that's what brought them together. Yes. Uh, when the English king decided that he would just, you know, absorb Scotland uh, if the clan chief can't, you know, decide. Yes. He was prepared to, you know send an army and take over after he had captured and killed William Wallace. Yeah. That, that prompted Scotland to get together and say, sorry, we are a country, we are a nation, and we will not be taken over. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I was reading, there's a, there's a, for anyone interested, there's a, a narrative historian mm -hmm. called Nigel Tranter who writes on Scotland's history. And uh, during this period, the English armies invaded Scotland and uh, in uh, one small town, they actually put everyone to death, man, woman and child. They weren't allowed to be buried, the people. So they left them there so that the stink from the bodies would just warn everyone around, this is what's going to happen to you if you rise up against us. And they thought they were doing something smart mm -hmm. by this, but instead of that, the Scotland, the Scottish people were just so offended that, that yeah. it actually united them even more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's that. So th this is all your 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 art of whiskey, according to, uh, and, and your commemoration in in your as as a patriot as you are, bringing your whiskey out, remembering all of that seven hundred years ago. That's fascinating, mm -hmm. Anthony. And anyone watching, really buy the whiskey and look at the history as well. It's on the bottle, you can read about it. Uh, and whilst you're drinking a lovely dram of Scotch whiskey, uh, look at part of Scotland's history. It's absolutely fascinating, very, very bloody, but some of it not, some of it is very good. A lot of Scotland's history is filled with wonderful inventions that they gave to the world. Mm -hmm. The uh, of engineering and medicine and, uh, you know, many of us wouldn't be alive today if it weren't for the discovery of penicillin by a Scotsman or many other great inventions, uh, chloroform and the television and the telephone, uh, all sorts of uh, inventions by the Scots. And uh, such a small country who put out such a lot of uh, engineering and, uh, and science to the world. And even even God created the midges, you know, when he created <laughs> Scotland. Yeah. So to keep the indesirables out of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one didn't work. Eh? A lot of them would still get. <laughs> they've, they've got their fair share of. Uh, they've got their fair share of. Um, how do you say it? Uh, mad men, Scotland. Let me put it that way. The. Uh, as Billy Connolly would say, thou shalt, thou shalt not. You know, we've got a lot of them as well. <laughs> we've got we've got the first ever vaccine, you know. Uh, we got it before anybody else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there, and there yeah, actually was a cocktail called the penicillin, is the <laughs> Oh, isn't it lovely? in the glass and it kills the bacteria in your mouth. There you go. Yeah, and viruses as well as the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So there, there we go. So Anthony, we're going to touch just briefly before we, we wrap up. Uh, you've got single casks on offer too in the Netherlands, yes? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little about 
Yeah, so the, the these tend to be the vintage range, um, which are in a decanter bottle. This is just a sample bottle. Uh, yeah. From one of them, but you, with the tube, you can see it better with the. With yes. The label. So they tend they, they they tend to be either single casts or two casts uh, distilled at the same time, mm -hmm. and the minimum uh, strength is forty six and a half. Uh, occasionally, I have some I bottle uh, a higher strength if I believe they merit a higher strength. Okay. My philosophy within the vintages, uh, they tend to be also double mature, but not always. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is I put the water in the bottle for you so you can drink it at its natural mm -hmm. strength in the bottle. Yes. So I'm not chasing your dram with water, putting too much then I'm having to add whiskey and then having to add more water. It's a fuel's game where you can easily empty, you know, a bottle in one night and yeah. not find the equilibrium between the spirit and the water. Okay. So what, what, what do you have in the, what juices do you have in them? Uh, so the, there's the liquid, there's Royal Brackler. Oh. Uh, Royal Brackler is a lovely one. It's at 51 Point five, and it's so pungent, so rich, uh, that would merit also a cigar uh, or some dark chocolate uh, or even some, you know, Christmas cake. Uh, so the, 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 well, sherry then, sherry uh, yeah. influence. Yeah, but again, it's a burgundy wine cask. Oh, uh, but not sherry. But it, but it gives the same structure as sherry. Okay. Uh, that's something which is really good. Uh, then for those who prefer a good bit of peat. Uh, so you've also got a Kalila, which is almost nine years old. Um, it was just bottled uh, one month before its anniversary of nine. Uh, and that's a typical Kalila, which is my favorite uh, Isla uh, malt because it's got the, you know, the character of Isla, you know, with some saltiness, uh, some seaweed, uh, but there's also some smoothness and a bit of sweetness coming through. Yes, so, uh, it's a uh, for me. It's a lovely, it's a lovely dram, uh, which you could have, let's say, with your cheese uh, during Christmas, uh -huh. or be, before you head on to Royal Brackler for your dessert. Oh, uh, yeah. and you could start the evening, just giving you hints there for your Christmas evening. Uh, you know, you could have the Mac Pink, either the normal one or the limited edition, two thousand thirteen. Uh, and I was in France last week um, and Switzerland, and I was saying, oh, this would go fantastically with some foie gras canopies for your aperitif. Yeah. Oh, so just, some, just some ideas if yeah. you don't know what to prepare for, you know, for your uh, Christmas lunch or dinner. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's lovely. And, and, and then from your main course, yeah. Uh, let's say the, you know, the, the McWarrior, either the normal edition or else the Abrof edition, a uh, fantastic also, which we'll be having for Christmas is venison with, a, mm. you know, a rich fruit sauce. Mm. And put a bit of your whiskey in the sauce as well makes it taste even better. Mm. Wow. How cool is that? Oh, Anthony, you've been so kind to come online. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording in a wee minute, but then, but don't go away, stay, so we can have a chat afterwards. And uh, so for all of you watching, we'll make it a wrap. I hope that you'll look up these the, the Art of Whiskey from Anthony, and uh, it's all on sale in the Netherlands and uh, all over Europe, basically, but I'm speaking for Bresser and Timmer in the Netherlands. And uh, look it up. It's, it's well worth... Uh, buying and it's the the bottles are, are, are lovely to look at you know beautiful you can see it behind me and these and um so please do and um uh from anthony and from me until the next time ladies and gentlemen slan shiva slan shiva